Hello, it's Tom for another Man and Great Book Review. Today's book is Shame by Ani Ernaux, translated from the French by Tanya Leslie and published in 1999 by Seven Stories Press. It's 112 pages. Ani Ernaux is a French writer. She won the Nobel Prize for Literature in 2022, the first French woman to win that award. Uh, Ernaux's books are uh, almost all short auto-fiction novels. They're uh, fictionalized accounts of events in her life. Uh, and this book, Shame, deals with a, a particularly traumatic event that occurred in 1952, uh, just before Erno turned 12 years old. Uh, in the June, of, on one Sunday in June of 1952, her parents and she and her parents had gotten back from Mass. Her parents were working class uh, people who owned a kind of half cafe, half grocery store in a small town uh, on the Normandy uh, Peninsula. So uh, they weren't Parisians, they were they were provincials. Uh, and their cafe slash uh, store was set up in such a way that their living quarters were halfway between two parts of the cafe, so they had no privacy at all. Uh, and the stores closed you know, briefly during Sunday, so they were by themselves. They got back and... The two, the, the husband and wife, had very different personalities. The, the, the mother was religious almost to the point of fanaticism, uh, whereas the father showed almost no interest in religion at all. He was more interested in politics. She had almost no interest in politics. They got into some kind of argument, and it escalated, and suddenly uh, the father starts shaking, like trembling, like he's having a seizure. Then he jumps up and grabs his wife by the neck, and he drags her down to the cellar and picks up a giant knife that they've been using to cut wood with and threatens to kill her. And she starts screaming. And uh, Annie, the little girl, runs down and sees what's happening. And she screams to stop. And then the father kind of snaps out of it and puts the knife down. And they both go back to the kitchen as if nothing had happened, which to her was even more shocking. And uh, when she starts, when Annie starts crying, the father says, calm down. I didn't do anything. Nothing happened. Uh, and she realizes that this, this was a titanic event in her life. It, she, it completely changed the way she thought about her father. I mean, she loved her father. Her father loved her. And yet he was capable of, of potentially killing her mother. It just it deeply, deeply shocked her. And it brought a sense of shame to her for the first time in her life. She became ashamed of her father. Uh, and she was torn between this thing where she loved her father, but at the same time, she was ashamed of his behavior. Uh, and this is a, a theme that you see running through a lot of her books, her, her combination of admiration for her parents and yet her also her shame for their, their, their uh, violence and their what to her seemed backward ways. Uh, the book also deals with her time uh, that year. Uh, the whole book covers the year of 1952 when she was 11 slash 12 years old. It also covers her time uh, in a, uh, a private Catholic school. Her parents sent her, sent her to this Catholic school, even though they could barely afford it because they wanted her to, they knew she was smart and they thought she'd get a better education. But the Catholic school's main goal wasn't really to educate. It was to crush the individuality and souls out of everybody. It was an incredibly restrictive, uh, humorless organization run by a bunch of mostly lay nuns. Uh, and she goes into quite a detail about how, how dreary life there was. Um, the mother goes to Lourdes on a pilgrimage, and she finds great spiritual happiness with that, gets away from her family. She comes back and insists that the father and daughter have to go there. And so she kind of makes them or guilts them into going to Lourdes, and they have a horrible time. Uh, the Annie's ashamed because her clothes are so shabby and out of style, and she doesn't. She obviously does, looks like a lower-class person around all these wealthier people. And the father's constantly complaining about how much it's costing and he buys the cheapest food and they stay in a kind of rundown hotel and neither one of them enjoy a moment of it. They're, they're all, you know, they're, they feel terrible. So it's, it's not a cheerful book at all. And it doesn't build any real climax. So the life just goes on. They, they go on with their lives, even though this horrible thing has happened. And none of them want to actually deal with the underlying causes of what caused the father to snap and nearly kill his wife. 
So it's uh, it's not a cheerful book, but it is one that's full of a lot of insight. Uh, Arno really, it really is one of those writers, uh, in some ways, like Carl of Knausgaard, who just reveals all of her life story. She doesn't hold anything back. Uh, she doesn't suppress anything that might be embarrassing. I mean, you get her entire life story in these short, compressed little novellas or novels. So if you are interested in translated fiction or in French literature, um, or Noah certainly kind of acquired taste. Uh, some people even in France think that she's overrated or that her focus on writing is too narrow, but others you know, regard her very highly. And of course, she did win the Nobel Prize. So if you're interested in uh French literature or translated fiction, uh, you may be interested in this book. Uh, the book is Shame. The author is Annie Ernaux. This has been another Man in Great book review. Thanks for watching.